Hi and welcome to what will be episode six of Who's Zooming Who with myself, Ken McCarthy, and joining me this week uh, is Oshin Hassan. Oshin is the program manager at the National Student Engagement Program, NSTEP, and a former deputy president of USI. And prior to that, again, would have been a student um, and indeed a sabbatical officer in Queen's University, Belfast but tells me he's a proud dairy man who's now hiding out in Donegal. Oshin, you're most welcome to the podcast. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Um, I'm fascinated to hear about the National Student Engagement Program. Um, so perhaps maybe you can just give us a brief introduction to yourself in case I've missed anything uh, mm -hmm. and an introduction to the project. Uh, thanks for having me on, Ken. I've never been on a vodcast before, so <laughs> this, is, this is the first time for everything. But I think everybody at the moment, uh, there's a lot of first times with, with Zoom and, and, and moving things online. Um, yeah, that's a fairly good synopsis of, of my background. I've been involved in student engagement and student representation and, uh, and student life for, for quite a number of years now. So I am the program manager of the National Student Engagement Program, NSTEP. Nearly a year ago now, back in July 2019, and we've been taking NSTEP through a new strategic phase. It started out in 2016. Uh, there were kind of two core elements to it, uh, and that was the student training program, building student capacity to be active decision makers and be an active part of a learning community uh, within higher education and institutional support and development. And we did that through a series of institutional analysis workshops uh, with 16 institutions. Uh, we're a partnership program of the Higher Education Authority, the HEA, QK, Quality and Qualifications Ireland, and USA, where I originally came from. Uh, and it's really all about building student engagement practice uh, across higher education in Ireland. Uh, and it really is through that lens of decision making, ensuring students are, are a core partner in decision making and the enhancement of, of higher education in Ireland. So we've been, we've been building that work over a number of years. Uh, the pandemic has, has created a new reality for us, but uh, one that's actually been really important because of that lack of face-to-face of -face engagement now. So how, how do we engage students in, in this new reality is really important to us at the moment. Apologies. I, I, I muted myself because there's a dog here next door and I forgot to unmute <laughs> myself. So um, apologies if you hear a barking. I should probably also point out that the, the, the house on my other side, uh, they recently bought a trampoline for their kids. So we, we could hear lots of... Uh, interesting, uh, interesting noises in the background, but look, that's that's part and parcel. That's part of this, this yeah. That's what happens this, now. This, this new reality. It's funny, actually, you <laughs> mentioned about doing things on Zoom because um, I saw I saw this morning in the paper they had the, the brilliant headline of "We need to talk about the elephant in the Zoom." Um, yeah. So it's, uh, it was talking about people perhaps spending too much time uh, too much time on Zoom. So student engagement. Um, as part of your project, what what what's your definition of student engagement? What do you see as being student engagement, or how would you, you know, if I, if if I met you and I didn't know what you did, how would you explain it to me um, as as uh, as what it is? That's a really timely question for us. Um, I didn't plant that one with you, but we're currently trying to look at the national definition of student engagement in Ireland. We were set up as a program in 2016, like I mentioned, under a conceptual framework that the Higher Education Authority, a working group developed. Um, that was led by Tom Collins at the time. Uh, and we define it nationally through a framework uh, of 10 principles of student engagement uh, under four domains. So student engagement is driven by enhancement through teaching and learning, quality assurance, uh, governance and management, and through student representation. And we use a definition from an American academic, Trailer and Trailer. Uh, and it's all around institutions putting resource and time and effort into cultivating and, and fostering a partnership with their students. So I suppose the, the quick way that we would say it is it's, it's around creating a student-centered approach in institutions through engaging your students and building their capacity to be active partners uh, in decision-making processes. It's... It's not student voice. Student voice is a big key part of it because student voice can often just be, we listened to you, we heard you, and we did this. But the way in student engagement includes students. So they're a part of the solutions. They're a part of acting on the voice of their peers. 
So I suppose that's the way that we would say it. It's not just about we heard you and we did something about it. It's that students are a part of, of creating the solutions and enhancing their own education uh, and indeed enhancing education for the experience of the staff and the institution as well. Um, we are trying to create our own definition now uh, as part of a revision of that framework and, and looking at those principles again because we've been creating that kind of practice and collaboration between staff and students now over the last number of years. So we've learned a lot as an Irish national higher education sector. So as a sector now, we want to define our own path on that um, rather than simply relying on some of the definitions of the past that were a little conceptual. They were kind of an ethos that we wanted to embody. But now we have maybe a bit more experience of, of actually living that ethos and practice. So um, that's what we're trying to do at the moment. We'll be launching, we'll be launching a, a bit of a debate over the next couple of weeks around that. So we're hoping it's a good time to do that. Sure, and and in terms of the the debate that you mentioned that you're 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 launching, what are the kind of themes that you expect to come through that, or what are the kind of things that uh, you expect to arise, or and indeed, have they been modified anywhat by by the the current situation we find ourselves in, or um, do you think it's it's we're just naturally transitioning to that 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 kind of place anyway? I think some of this discussion has probably been accelerated now um, by the pandemic, or at least it's sharpened people's minds a bit to it. So, you know, there, in terms of student engagement, there's, there's, there's the formal approach to student engagement. There's this more semi-formal and then there's the informal. And very, and very often um, there is maybe a reliance on the informal, and that's no bad thing. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because that's where the, the real the real value and depth of, of, of evidence. You find, you know, the face-to-face, -face, the, the one-to-one -one engagement between students and staff, that's where real, the real relationships are about, that real partnership, uh, especially in teaching and learning itself. Um, but we've obviously been working and focus on the more formal approaches to some extent uh, and ensuring that institutions and staff and students build a systematic approach to student engagement through, through institutional life because you take a systematic approach as an institution to lots of other things so we would say why not the same with student engagement you want to ensure the same you don't want to lose the vibrancy of it what you're trying to do with with a systematic and clear coherent approach to student engagement is to actually strengthen that vibrancy and make sure that you're asking the right questions and you're involving people in meaningful ways that you know avoids that traditional idea of, of tokenism uh, it, it does build their capacity to be involved in something um, much more much more in depth. We know that, the, that students aren't around for a particularly long period of time in comparison to staff. So, you know, you want to be able to do the absolute most with the experiences that they have um, and change things in a way that will benefit those who come after them. Uh, and their experiences unlocking all of that uh, can only be done with them in the room but in a way that allows them to contribute in a way that they feel confident and valued and, uh, 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 and understood. So you really want to be able to evidence the student voice, that student engagement through, through your processes systematically. Um, so I, I think the pandemic, certainly from NSEP's perspective, has probably sharpened that. Um, uh, and we would, we, we're, going, we're going to renew our focus on, on the formal and semi-formal to some extent um, in order to strengthen the informal. We're not leaving the informal out. We actually view that systematic approach as, as crucial kind of underpinning to informal approaches to student engagement um, that happen every day in all sorts of different ways. Um, so that's, that's, it has, it's certainly changed things for us, but, I, but in a way that's just kind of sharpened some of, of, of the, the work that we were, we were already trying to build. So, so I suppose just touching on the work that, that you were building, I mean, I'm aware um, you had developed a digital badge with the National Forum on um, student uh, engagement that I think you were going to be rolling out. Um, you'd also done some um, institutional workshops or reviews, mm -hmm. uh, and you were doing some student training um, uh, events. Obviously, given the current situation, some all 
most of that may, may not exactly happen the way you had planned. Um, so, so what do you see from, from where we are now in, in um, May 2020 and looking at the, the, the forthcoming academic year that looks very uncertain at this, uh, mm -hmm. at, at this point in time, exactly when that will start. What, what do you see will be your rollout in terms of, of work and how could I as an educator or somebody working in, in higher education engage with your work um, mm -hmm. over, the, over the coming uh, few weeks and months? Our two core pillars were that student training program and the, the work that we did around institutional analysis, the institutional support stream. And while we've been disrupted, certainly, uh, and, and timelines have changed, and the, probably the biggest piece of disruption has actually been involved in the sector. Um, you know, NSTEP doesn't, we don't create everything uh, internally and then, and then roll it out. It, we want it to be as collaborative uh, as we want that student engagement to be in institutions. Um, so I think from, from that perspective, certainly the, the resources and, and the workload and the stress that's been put on the sector has, has definitely disrupted us because you know, we, we can't put any more pressure on them and ask them to be involved in things. That, you know, they're, they're trying to get teaching and learning and assessment online. And, and that's, that's, that's the aim of the game at the moment. That, that has to be the focus for, for the well-being of staff and students. But we're, we're certainly on track to roll out a revised program uh, through the next academic year. And if anything, I think it's been strengthened by, by this. So our student training program uh, has been largely introductory. We've trained... We're, we're closing in on 3,000 students now uh, since 2016. But um, that's usually, uh, we rely upon one training session in the year at the beginning of the year with those students. And then that's really the last time that, that we'll see them um, or interact with them. So our plan had been to go to a much more blended approach in that we would deliver face-to-face -face training. Our student trainers who are all active students themselves go out across the country, deliver the face-to-face -face training. But the, the plan is now to have um, some online training, have resources that we have our own learning management system uh, that, that students could be actively engaged in. Uh, and that would allow them later in the year to come back and claim um, digital badge and, and recognition for their work uh, within their institutions. So if anything, that has certainly, has, uh, to use the term again, it's sharpened our minds on, on how to do that and how to, how to involve them. And what kind of value they want from that? What, 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 how, how would they like to be recognised for the really important work they're doing? Uh, the digital badge has definitely, our plans for that have changed. So we had only piloted the digital badge, and what we were doing was we were going through a big redevelopment of that. We held that off um, when the pandemic hit, but we are now starting to go through the motions on that again, so that we can evolve people across the sector and kind of reviewing it and giving their thoughts and, and feelings on, 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 on how to roll it out and what would be really valuable for staff. Uh, and we have lots of ideas on how to do that. One of the key things that we want to make sure is that students are involved in every part of the badge and that it is a collaborative badge so that we that we live and breathe everything that, that we're supposed to embody. But we will move fully online in the first iteration of the badge with preferred um, outcome being that the blended would be would we'd be able to roll out blended afterwards but we want to be able to roll out that badge within institutions um, once we've gone through the first national rollout then that will have supported facilitators to go into institutions uh, their own institutions or to other institutions and and to work with other staff and students on the badge so our plans have our plans have, have changed on that in terms of institutional support, we're already, we're already looking at how to run workshops online. Um, that's just, that's the necessity of it to some extent. So everything has changed to a degree, but a lot of our plans that we already had on blended delivery um, have, have, have probably benefited from this discussion because everybody's very, very much actively thinking about it. Yeah, and I, and I think the other probably good thing is that there's an acceptance now um, of doing things online that possibly might have been there um, only a, a few sharp months ago. Um, we're, 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 we're definitely doing more yeah. uh, online, online than we probably ever did. In terms of, I'm really interested and I'm impressed with the number of 3,000 students that you would have um, 
that you would have trained. Um, what? So again, it's a long time since I was a, an undergraduate student. Um, don't know if I can remember back that far. Uh, but so if I was a student and, and I had attended one of your training sessions, I, I presume this is, this is pe- for people that have volunteered to some extent and that they, they, they're possibly class reps. Um, or, yes. or, yeah. So yeah, by, by and large, the, the students that we train every year are class reps. Um, or, or more broadly, we, we train academic representatives. Um, so not, you know, there'd be other students that wouldn't necessarily be in the class rep bracket, but they, they would represent their peers in, in some way um, and they would work within the enhancement space. Uh, and I think that's the focus that we take. It's, it's, it's an enhancement focus, um, certainly. Uh, so our introductory training is, is, our, is our biggest piece. So that would be, it's either your first time as a rep, um, very often those are first years, um, or it's your first time going through the training or getting form, any formal training. Um, you'll know that student unions will do different kinds of training, maybe around communications, getting involved in, in activism, those kinds of things. We'll be fo- we're focused in on academic enhancement, and that's that's where we run our training. What we'd like to do um, once they've done the introductory and had that important kind of connection with other reps and other students who are interested is to have smaller modules online that would allow them to delve into some of the issues that you just don't get to cover in one session and you certainly wouldn't get to cover it um, very early on in someone's role. You want to be able to kind of build their capacity as they move through um, the year and they move through their role as a rep and they start to actually encounter some of the issues because whenever you get them in the door the first time they might not even know what the issues are that they're going they're going to face um, or that their peers in the class are going to face. So we would like to create more of a resource hub there for them but also it would allow them to dip in and out at their own pace, kind of a non-linear approach. And then that does mean that when it comes to further on in the year and you, you want them to be able to, to kind of log their efforts, we can, we can interact with them, get reflective pieces from them on how they found the year. That's not something that we're currently doing. So that, that'd be a wealth of information from reps all across the country for the sector to understand yeah, no, from no, their, it, their perspective. Yeah, no, it, sound, it sounds like it would be a fantastic resource. I mean, um, Particularly, and I'm guessing your, your training obviously is done close to the start of the year. Um, with, yes. With, and, and, you know, um, it's it's probably only by that reinforcement and, and even yeah. the networking with, with other people in other colleges um, yeah. and being able to kind of reference that, well, um, somebody in college X uh, told me this um, or, or the practice there is is, is why um, that kind of even just sh- sharing that, that those kind of experiences um, will probably yeah. um, add tremendously to the value of it and, and so you're, you're, you're hoping to roll that out this coming year as a as an online program which right. obviously uh, uh, yeah be facilitated in throughout the year with, with, with extra refresher pieces yeah the revised training will be We'll be launching that in the summer to roll out over the first semester and then through the year. Um, obviously, we wanted to kind of renew the the value and people's interest in the training across the sector. We're hoping now that actually the pandemic will, you know, will engage more, especially on the staff side and on the management side, that they'll see that actually there could be a wealth of information from this process now that, that might be more acutely needed than, than, than previously felt. That you know, if, if if we're going to go through that process, and a number and quite a number of reps um, are engaging with us through the year, because we're not sure if semester one and semester two how those things are going to roll out. You know, from from the Christmas period through into the new year into twenty twenty one, all of that's very much up in the air. Obviously, the idea of staggered entry, all of that's going to have an impact on how we roll out the training. But we also want to try and make sure that we capture the student experiences those reps, the experiences they have and trying to represent their peers through what'll be a very tricky year for them as representatives. And I, and I think uh, to some extent, they're, they're going to be very much frontline in, in terms of student engagement next year uh, and, and how to work with the institution through all of that. So we, we hope to be able to support the sector with as much information as possible as we go through that and as much support as possible. Yeah, no. I, I mean, look. I, I know from some of our own internal discussions here in in uh, in WIT, 
what next year is going to look like is is almost yeah. anyone's guess um, yeah. at, at at this remove. And, and I think I, I might have said it on one of these um, on one of these other podcasts, but or maybe I said it to, to people I work with. But you know, we're, we're trying to guess things um, that are going to be happening in four or five months' time, and when we possibly when we couldn't possibly have guessed where we are now four or five months ago. So um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's uh, try, trying to see into the future. And, and it is, look, I, I mean, I guess any of, of next year's uh, first year students that are going to be coming into to college for the first time, um, they've been through a leaving certificate like no other. Um, and they'll probably be starting semester one uh, like no other as well. So yeah. they'll, they'll certainly have been through um, uh, very changed um, circumstances to 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 the to the normal uh, college experience. Um, I'm guessing at this stage, and obviously none of us know for certain that quite a lot of um, semester one activities will be done online due to social distancing um, regulations and, and and things like that, um, and reduced capacity in colleges. And you you, you touched on some of it yourself there in terms of staggered starts. Uh, and I suppose, you know, the, the other real issue in terms of um, engagement and then getting to know these students is that while this time around the colleges, well, in our case, we closed um, in week nine. Um, so the relationships that students had with each other, the relationships that students had with the institution and the relationships that students had with the lecturers were all well established and well bedded in. Yeah, this time around, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have um, each, each of those pillars will be complete strangers to one another yeah. um, and, and how that's all managed um, I think is critical in terms of yeah. easing the transition into third level uh, first and foremost and also obviously um, working towards that, that third level experience being uh, as, good as, it, as good as it possibly can be. The digital badge that, you, that you've developed as a pilot with the forum was aimed primarily at staff. Would you touched on yeah. students involved in that as well, or is it students are involved in yeah. the, the content of, or? Yeah. We're working through our development on that um, at the moment, and we're not quite sure how that's going to look, but what we're keen to do uh, is ensure that wh whether it's, or the badge is for all staff, um, in higher education, not just staff who teach, but all staff. Um, student engagement happens in every corner of the institution. Uh, but what we're very keen to do is make sure that students and kind of that ethos of student partnership is built into the badge. So we, we, we do have a, we're putting together the team of redevelopers from the staff side, but we're also putting together a team of student redevelopers that will help us to, to build the content. What we also want to make sure, and at the moment we're, um, I, 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 I don't want to say too much at the moment about what it's going to look like, but at the moment it, there's kind of a number of sections to the badge and how we would roll it out over a number of weeks. Um, and in each section, we're trying to build in uh, students uh, facilitating um, or guiding or, or leading on elements of the badge. So we want them to kind of take an ownership of it as well. How we're going to do that, we're not quite sure how we're going to recognize their involvement in that. We haven't really figured out, but we are building a, a system of digital badging for students anyway. So that, 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 would, that would probably come as a part of it. Um, and we do have teams of students especially our student training team so we can already see ways in which we can lift practice from from those elements of the program into the digital badge but we're very keen to demonstrate to staff who get involved in the badge that um okay we, we can work through the concepts and we can work through your own professional experience and the context that you're in and how to engage students within that context but what we actually want you to do is also to engage students as part of that and and if anything you know the okay, it's all well and good having a debate with each other as staff about your experiences, but, you know, the, that, that room needs to have students involved in it in order to, to maybe sharpen some of your ideas. I know I keep coming back to that term sharpening, but, you know, to, 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 to really put people through student engagement as, as it could be practiced. So we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at ways to do that um, at the moment, um, and we're hoping it'll... We're hoping that people will find it quite innovative when when it when it's done and dusted. But we will go through a, a kind of another pilot uh, before rolling out in institutions. Um, so we'd be we'd be keen to talk to anyone about how to get students at an institutional level as well involved in badge. 
Yeah, no, I, look, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the, the, the National Forum um, CPD badges, um, but that's probably because I was involved in rolling out one of them with, 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 the, with Marie, who I spoke to last week. But no, I think they're, I think they're a fantastic idea, and I think that they're, um, they, 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 they offer staff um, an opportunity to, I suppose, you mentioned sharpen, um, I'm going to say sharpen as well, in terms of sharpen the saw, in terms of, 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 yeah. of, of keeping current. Uh, and they're, you know, for the most part, they're, they're, they're low enough investment in terms of it's not you know, a big formal academic uh, module yeah. that you're, you're committing to, 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 to lots of time to. Um, you touched on one interesting thing there in terms of those badges being available for anybody who works um, in, 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 in HE. And I think that's uh, actually a key point because too often um, we have these silos within the institutes of these are the academics and these are the uh, admin and these are the technicians. But to most students, they just see the institution. They don't, yeah. they don't necessarily see the different departments. Absolutely. They don't see yeah. um, that that's registry, that's academic, yeah. or academic affairs, that's student yeah. services. You know, they just see whatever the institution is. Um, and, and a lot of those kind of divisions at an institutional level um, are there for our convenience rather than the convenience of, uh, of, of students. Um, and, and I'm always very conscious of the fact that, you know, when students approach us in, in our department, um, that even though it mightn't, be strictly speaking an issue to do with us, we should be signposting them to at least the right person rather than just saying yeah. yeah. wrong door, not knock, knock at the next one, you know? Um, yeah, but, I, it just, I think the, the principles of student engagement for us should, should underpin higher education uh, as a whole and, and any work we can do with individual staff members to support that is, is really important to to underpin and more thematic practices that we want institutions to champion. So for us, the digital badge is, is key to that. Um, we can certainly work with institutions to, uh, to work on those practices, but I, I think being able to reach as many staff as possible ac across, all, um, across all areas is, is core to that. Again, I, for I forgot the, 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 to unmute myself because yeah, of the, the dog, dog next yeah. door. Um, I'm going to blame him for all my mistakes from now on. Um, just, I suppose, getting back to, to your, yourself and in terms of where this current uh, pivot, I think, is the, is the, is the parlance that's yeah. used to, to, to mm -hmm. online. And how do you find that has, has impacted on some of the students maybe that you would have worked with? Um, or have you heard much in that regard? Or is it that everybody's just too busy getting on with it to even stop and have a look around? Yeah. I think in general, I think most people would agree that that, that students have come under significant pressure because uh, it's not just the move to online. Um, the, the whole of society has 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 shifted, um, and it's it's quite a scary time. So to be able to try and hone in on your own education and and, and worry about your own education and juggle everything else. It's difficult, and I know from my own experience as a student representative and, and, and working with students for so long that it's very often the you know a student can come to talk to you about the academic issue they face, but actually underneath it there's so many other issues that that from their own personal lives, from their working lives that affect that. Um, and I think this has definitely exacerbated a lot of that, and it's certainly a very worrying time. And we know that when we talk about student engagement. There's a disengaged or the unengaged, the, the students that just don't appear um, anywhere, uh, and you don't. It's just difficult to to even e even get them in through the door, uh, and we have no door for them to walk through at the moment. So, I, I, I think that's that's a big question for us all um, in higher education. It was a big question certainly before now, but uh, if anything, it's become more existential. Um, so, I, I certainly from from experience, this I think this is just exacerbated. A lot of the worries that we all have um, for, for students uh, and maybe this is a time now to really focus in on that and make that uh, something for everyone to, to really pivot back to um, yeah and, not, and, and systematically yeah, systematically again as, as a sector just uh, take on the conversation yeah it's, it's really interesting there when you mentioned the, the, the disengaged or, or unengaged and unfortunately at the moment um, we've no way of telling 
um, necessarily why that is the case. Um, you know, putting on an educator hat for a second, you know, if you're sitting in a classroom and there's somebody sitting in front of you and they're staring out the window, then you can see that. Um, yeah. But online, um, if somebody's not logging on, yeah. there, there could be a, a myriad of reasons for that. Not least of which is that they may well live in a place where they don't have adequate broadband. Exactly. They may not um, have a, a, a device. Um, yeah. So there could be lots of good reasons, lots of bad reasons. Yeah. Um, and, and I do think that um, out of all this, um, maybe some sort of uh, looking back and seeing, well, these are the things that worked okay. These are the things that went well. Uh, and these are the things that, well, yeah, we, 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 people fell through the cracks there and we need to put in, yeah. uh, we need to put something in place to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, that doesn't happen the next time around. And, you know, I, I know myself uh, and my experience has been that most educators that I'm dealing with um, are doing their level best. And, and, and a lot of yeah. the times they're doing their level best in, in very unfamiliar surroundings yeah. um, where this was kind of, you know, thrown upon them in hours or minutes as opposed to uh, weeks or months. Uh, mo most, uh, I think, for the, that, that I've spoken to certainly want the very best for their students. Um, but it, it, in terms of either engaging with students uh, at a systematic level uh, or engaging with students in that informal way, if if they don't have the means to engage, um, then mm -hmm. obviously you know you you can't make that happen at the moment. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny um, the kind of things that went through uh, short supply on the likes of Amazon initially um, were things like uh, webcams, um, so you just couldn't be couldn't be had. Yeah. Um, I know I went to look at buying a new PC myself because my laptop keeps. Uh, deciding to crash at random intervals, um, and I was looking at six weeks before I could uh, before I could get anything. So um, yeah. the kind of things we took for granted that you could just pop around the corner to the shop and yeah, pick something exactly. up um, that that, yeah. that that's all gone. Um, yeah, I'm conscious that we, we've been talking. Would you believe for over half an hour? Um, I've said this every week, so I'm going to say it again just to keep the the time does fly when you're when, when you're having fun. It does. Um, <laughs> It, it's been a, an absolute pleasure um, to talk to you, and I'm sure our paths will, will cross again um, when, when, when we're allowed to move more than uh, is it five yeah. kilometers for Laucona. Yeah, um, I would have locked right anyway. The, 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 um, and the absolute best, uh, best of luck with the, with the, with the rest Thank of the project. Just, just in finishing up, the project is going to run for another how long? Well, our current strategy is till the end of 2021, so we have plenty of work ahead of us, but, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll last longer than that. Um, okay. We'll be in five years running by that point, but current strategy is to 2021, and I, I think that whole strategy is definitely now being uh, COVID-proofed, I've been using okay. that term, and we're thinking about, you know, everything's changed, but sure. but we, we'll, we'll work to support the sector to, to work through that and, and systematically improve student engagement in Ireland. That's, that's the plan. Brilliant. Well, Sheen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, thanks, 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 thanks a million for your time. Um, and um, yeah. Thanks very much, Ken. Appreciate see, see it. See you again soon. Talk to you soon.